This table took me on a wild journey. It was a crazy story. I'm gonna tell you how I ended up only having three days to build a $5,000 kitchen table. It was nuts. It definitely wasn't easy. And the day before it got delivered, I almost totally blew the deadline. As you know, we've sold mostly cutting and charcuterie boards the last couple of years. We've made about half a million dollars, but we wanted to release another table design. I mean, true to the name of our company, we wanted to build another table. And not only did I just build this one table in less than four days, I actually had to build three of them. And it was the building of the first two that led up to me having such a short time window to build the third one. It's a crazy story. I can't wait to dive in. Jenny had a great idea for a table design that she thought would do really well here in Houston. It would match some current design trends and it would be a fun challenge for me because this table had a round tabletop and I'd never done that before. And I'd probably get to buy a few new toys, I mean tools, to help me with the project. But we couldn't just build a table for the sake of building a table. We had to have a customer. After all, this is a business. And we found out that some friends from church were looking for a new dining table and they wanted it to be really trendy and modern. We asked them if they would be willing to take a risk for a little bit of a discount. Now, this was a pretty adventurous couple. We wouldn't just ask any client or customer this question. But with them, we felt like this might work. We showed them the design rendering for the round table and they fell in love with it. This couple was in no rush. We had all the time in the world to build this table. They were traveling a lot and they already had a dining table. They were just looking for a nicer one. This was the perfect couple to help us develop a new product for our business. So we closed the deal and got to building.
This table was essentially our prototype. It had a lot of firsts for us. This is the first time I had made a circular tabletop. This is the first time I'd ever played with a lot of geometry and compound cuts to, to make this table base. I mean, I had to do math on this project. It was a lot of fun, but it wasn't perfect. But we also know that that's just the maker's curse. When you build something, you don't see the final product. All you see are the flaws and the mistakes that you made along the way. But this table came out amazing. And our friends got a heck of a deal on a table that will definitely outlast them. But because we want to grow our business, when we build something new, we don't think about just building one. We think about building a hundred of them. And although this is a beautiful table that'll last them a long time, we definitely would not build a hundred of them in the same way that we built this one. This table is gonna be fine. This was Davis's first time building a big circular tabletop. He did a good job, but he was definitely on the struggle bus for certain parts of it. So I needed to build a second table, not necessarily for any specific customer, but so I could learn how to build a bunch of these much more efficiently. I needed to improve our processes and figure out how to build these tables faster. So armed with my updated plans and notes, I took a lot of the leftover materials from the first one and built the second table. This table, even though we didn't have a customer for it, was really an investment in our ability to market and sell the table. We needed one in our own office that we could take pictures of and Jenny could use to showcase to prospective buyers. A couple changes with this design, instead of using solid wood for the base, I used white oak plywood and oh my gosh, it was amazing. The plywood was so much easier to handle and to cut. It was easier to shape. And when I went to assemble it, there was no bowing or, or bent wood. I didn't have to worry about conflicting geometry for wood expansion. For a thousand reasons, the plywood was better than using solid wood for the base. Even though the plywood's a little more expensive than solid wood, it was actually cheaper to produce because it was so much faster. I've always sort of been a solid wood traditionalist, but this plywood produced a better quality product. I was able to do it faster and it ended up being cheaper. Yes, please. But the tabletop was still solid wood. I feel like that's kind of a non-negotiable. So when this table was done, we loaded it in the car and we drove it to downtown Houston to a photo studio to take really great marketing photos of it. And look how they turned out. Armed with our amazing photos and videos of this table, we decided to market it two ways. I had never tried to sell the same table multiple times, so this was new to me. First, I was gonna send a bunch of mailers to brand new neighborhoods all around Houston. Our friends have a business where they do direct mail, and so we enlisted them to help us with these flyers. And then we were gonna run social media ads against all the neighborhoods that we had just mailed flyers to. So hopefully over about a month or so, they would see that table design multiple times and be able to make a decision to buy one. The second way we were gonna market this was I was just gonna cold call a bunch of interior designers and see if they had any projects at the moment where this table would be a good fit. And as you can expect, having never done either of these strategies ever before, we learned so much in that two month span. We learned how to make a good mailer. We learned how to look up zip codes. We learned how to use the postal service website to figure out what neighborhoods you could send things to and how many people even lived there. And I also got a fire hose of information about how the interior design world works and it is wild. I learned so much. It's an enormous industry and within that industry they have their own rules and how things work and best practices. It was a lot. <laughs> so hit subscribe and let us know down in the comments if you want to hear more lessons about that whole experience. We've been sharing them with the people in the stud stack, which is our private community for makers who run businesses. But if you guys let us know that you want to learn a little bit more about that as well, we might make a video or two on it. Long story short, it was just way too much information to process. And unfortunately, despite these two methods of marketing, we didn't sell any tables during that period of time, which was a real bummer. $2,000 worth of mailers down the drain and another thousand in social media ads gone. And weeks of trying to call interior designers instead of selling cutting and charcuterie boards. We just bit off more than we could chew. We didn't do enough of any one thing. We spread ourselves too thin doing too many different types of marketing. With our heads hung low, we went back to selling boring old cutting and charcuterie boards, feeling really defeated. But then, out of nowhere, my phone rang. An interior designer who had used our boards for Christmas gifts called because she had seen our table design and needed one ASAP. 
She had bought this big concrete table for her clients, but the concrete that connected the metal posts that held the top and the base together had crumbled. So this 100 pound tabletop was wobbling back and forth at every meal. They had two young kids. I don't even wanna think about what could have happened. They needed a new table now, but Davis and I, we're in Miami. We were both deployed with the hurricane hunters in Miami in the peak of hurricane season. And we wouldn't be back in the shop until three days before her client's deadline. Our work was cut out for us as soon as we got home. Always do it on my own, so I gotta get through it And the only thing I know is to love what I'm doing Never give up, never slow, till I finally prove it Never listen to the no's, I just wanna keep moving Keep my head up when I act, head up, that's a fact Never looking back, I'ma keep myself on track Keep my head up, staying strong, always moving on Feel I don't belong, tell my thoughts to move along Push myself to be the best, die with no regrets Live with every breath, see my message start to spread And I had so many dreams, then you hit your teens Life ain't really what it seems, try to find out what it means Always do it on my own, so I gotta get through it And the only thing I know is to love what I'm doing Never give up, never slow Till I finally prove it Never listen to the no's I just wanna keep moving Yeah, I put out all the art It's my only medicine, yeah Everything I do, I'm just being genuine Yeah, I'm sick of being screwed Feel my own adrenaline Yeah, I do just what I do And I hope you let me in, let me in, yeah I want the real stuff, everybody listen up Cause I'll only say it once I'm gonna show you all the path If you want it bad I'm gonna show you where it's at Yeah, how you can get it back Yeah, cause I ain't never done I'll be number one Working hella hard until I get just what I want Yeah, rise just like the sun Yeah, fatal like a gun Shooter's gonna shoot it I did all the building for this table in just three days. I worked nonstop with just enough sleep that I still felt comfortable using all the big power tools. And the best part, they wanted this table in the black color that we had been advertising, which was our favorite color. We were really hoping somebody would want to order a black one. So I had a can of black finish from a previous project. It had been a little while since I had sprayed something black, so a little voice in my head told me to check the can of finish the night before I was going to spray it. It was totally and completely solid. Over half a can of finish, completely ruined, totally dried out. I checked my phone. It was 8.30 p.m. Nobody was open. I had to spray finish the next day or we were going to be late with our first job to a huge well-known interior designer here in Houston. So I frantically typed the name of the finish into Amazon and what do you know, they had a can in stock and they could deliver it to me overnight. I placed the order without even thinking and I prayed that it would be waiting for me when I got to work the next morning. The next morning. It was sitting there waiting for me by the door, but my work wasn't finished yet. I still had to get the table to the customer on time. Let's do it on my own, so I gotta get through it. And the only thing I know is to love what I'm doing. Never give up, never slow till I finally prove it. Never listen to the no's, I just wanna keep moving. Yeah, I put out all the art, it's my only medicine. Yeah, everything I do, I'm just being genuine. Yeah, I'm sick of being screwed, feel my own adrenaline. Yeah, I do just what I do, and I hope you let me in, let me in, yeah. So we had to sneak in the new table to the house while also quietly removing the old table all the while the husband was upstairs on an important business call. The wife was nowhere to be seen. It was just us, the movers, 
and a silent table switch. We were so exhausted. So we quickly showed up, dropped off the new table, and then ran back home. And halfway back to the warehouse, the wife called us. She was in tears. She was in love with her new table and she could not believe how quickly we were able to build it and deliver it to their house. They had waited months for the table that ended up breaking, but they only had to wait a few days for ours to be delivered. Solve a problem, don't sell a product. For all of the advertising and the marketing that totally flopped, what actually ended up selling this table was our turnaround time. This interior designer is locally famous. A job with a high profile designer like her can make or break a small business who's trying to elbow their way into the massive market that is interior design. Solving this problem for her is gonna bring us way more money in the future. If you sell what you make, focus on highlighting the problems that you solve with your product. That's where you're gonna see the most success in your marketing efforts. So join the Stud Stack if you want us to help you figure out what that is and grow your business faster. Subscribe and we'll see you on the next video. Until then, best of luck with your businesses.